Hi, good day all of you. Welcome to our session. Welcome to our channel, Intelligible Tutorials. In this today's session now, I want to give the clear information of the UML diagrams. Already we have discussed uh, some of the common modeling techniques and other things, other uh, introductory things relevant to the UML diagrams. And now we are going to discuss about uh, what are the various kinds of the UML diagrams. In my previous videos, uh, I have already uploaded how to work with the various kinds of the UML diagrams uh, in the star UML, how to draw those diagrams, how to use the um, relationships in those diagrams. All these things I have successfully uploaded including the generation of the code in Java, generation of the code in Python, generation of the code in C++, each and everything I have uploaded in my YouTube channel. Uh, please go through once um, in the UML lab sessions, the name of the playlist it is. Now we are going to discuss about the rest of the theoretical part of the UML. So that is nothing but what are the various kinds of the UML diagrams. Okay. So before going to discuss about the various kinds of the UML diagrams, first of all, I want to give the clear information regarding the process views, the various kinds of the views. Okay. So these are nothing but views, not the process views, various kinds of the views. Okay. These are also called as system views and the system views are divided into number one, use case view number 2 process view number 3 design view number 4 implementation view and number 5 deployment view so these are the various kinds of the system views in the UML diagrams. First of all, we are going to talk about the use case view. What is the meaning of the use case view? The use case view tells us about the requirements of the system using the use case diagrams. Okay, so requirements in the case of use cases in use case diagram and as well as how the ongoing activity is going on, what are the activities are linked with the events, what are the various kinds of the activities, all these things with the help of activity diagrams. So use case view covers these two diagrams. Number one is the use cases, number two is the activity diagrams. Okay, now coming to the process view. What is the meaning of the process view? How this process will go? This process view will be described about the timeline or lifeline of the objects. That is nothing but sequence diagrams. And how the object is processing, how the object states are changing from one state to another state, how the classes are changing, how the class process is going on using the class and as well as the state chart diagrams. This process you contain two different diagrams, sequence diagrams, class and state chart diagrams. Now coming to the design view, design view means how the design can be done, how the number of the abstractions are there within the system, how these abstractions are being connected and what are the various relationships among these abstractions. This entire thing can be clearly described by using the design view and this design view can contain class diagrams. Okay, these are class diagrams, interfaces, etc., packages, etc. Next coming to the implementation view, how this, thing, how this thing is going to be implemented, how this thing is going to be uh, implemented in the real time. This implementation view again contain the class diagram because using the classes only the code can be implemented, write it or not. So one more uh, diagram that takes place in the implementation view is the state chart diagram how the states are uh, changing the object particular one particular object how the states are changing from one object to the another object that is nothing but implementation view. So this implementation view contains the number one class diagram and as well as what is the next one is state chart diagram. Okay and now last one is nothing but the deployment view. 
deployment view how these uh, one more thing we have forget this implementation diagram this implementation diagram can also include packages so this can also can be implemented by using the component diagrams finally we are having the deployment view deployment view is nothing but various kinds of the deployment diagrams how the nodes are being connected how the various kinds of nodes are being connected what are the uh, links from one node to another node all these things can be successfully uh, written in this deployment diagram so these are the various kinds of the diagrams use case view can be represented with the help of use case and activity diagrams and process view can be represented with the help of sequence class and state chart diagrams design view can be represented with the help of class interfaces packages etc these kind of the diagrams and now implementation view can be represented with the help of class diagram state chart component diagram deployment view can be represented by using the deployment diagram and now directly we see what are the various kinds of the ml diagrams directly we see now okay so let us see how these diagrams are differentiated and we list out various kinds of the diagrams how this list of listing of these diagrams can be divided into various kinds of the things all these things now we are going to see okay as previously i told uh, various kinds of the use case diagrams uh, the first one is the uml diagram see uml diagrams first of all can be classified into two types okay so the one is the static diagram another one is the dynamic or behavioral diagrams okay so what is the meaning of static diagram what is the meaning of dynamic or behavioral diagram static means structural things okay so it only shows the static things no dynamic changing no ongoing processes it won't show so static means only structural representation it only represents the structural representation dynamic means it represents behavioral things behavioral representation so what are the diagrams that comes under this static what are the diagrams that comes under this uh, dynamic in the static diagram the first one is the class diagram and object diagram and component diagram and deployment diagram whereas in the behavioral thing how the things are changing in the behavioral how the process is going to be changed the first behavioral diagram is use case diagram next one is sequence total number of the diagrams are 9 okay so now here it is 4 sequence diagram 3 collaboration diagram 4 activity 5 state chart like this we are having uh, multiple number of the diagrams this 4 plus 5 total is equal to 9 number of the uml diagrams we are having now we will discuss one after another how these diagrams can be represented see static and dynamic once again and static diagrams class diagram object diagram component diagram deployment diagram and now coming to the dynamic diagrams uh, use case sequence collaboration activity state chart these are the various nine kinds of the diagrams that we are having in uh, ml okay now we see how these diagrams can get uh, represented the very first one is nothing but the class diagram this class diagram contains set of classes objects no not objects interfaces and their relationships class diagram represents what are the various kinds of the abstractions in the class how these abstractions are linked with another abstractions can be represented in the form of the classes so how these classes can be represented 
what are the interfaces pure abstract classes interfaces are nothing but pure abstract classes they never be instantiated okay so but they can be inherited but they never be instantiated instantiation means they never be for them we cannot create the instance that is called as the class diagram sir that is called as the in interface so class diagram contain collection of the classes and as well as the interfaces and their relationships the static relationships it does not show any kind of the uh, what we can call uh, dynamic behavior that is nothing but the class diagram the next one is nothing but the object diagram this object diagram shows the set of the objects within the system how statically these objects are be connected with each other that is nothing but the object diagram okay so the next one is component diagram see objects can be class can be first of all we see the class class can be represented by a three part box interface can be represented by a circle okay and now coming to the object diagram object can be represented with the help of a rectangle with the with the help of this object a is the name of the class a is the name of the object like this this object can be represented like this and now we are going to talk about the component diagrams the components are nothing but collection of classes collection of interfaces and their relationships collection of packages each and everything the collection of grouping things is nothing but the component diagram whenever we use this component diagram whenever we are talking about the design view we are going to talk about this component diagrams a component can be represented graphically in the uml like this this is component right and now we see what is the deployment diagram deployment diagram is also some set of the static diagram like component diagram only the collection of the things the component diagram can contain does not show any kind of dynamic behavior in the same manner deployment diagram also shows how the collection of the nodes within the system how it can be represented the collection of the nodes means how the clients and the servers will be connected in the reality of implementation how these servers and nodes are be connected with each other like this see like this this is node 1 node 1 node 2 how they are connected this diagram is nothing but the example of the uh, deployment diagram so like this we are having the four different types of the static diagrams now we are shifting to the dynamic diagrams what is the purpose of this dynamic diagrams how these dynamic diagrams can be represented until uh, unlike the static diagrams uh, the dynamic diagrams are the different one they can be have some process ongoing process they can have some set of uh, um, views collection of changing views so not the structural things they will represent they will also represent they will uh, always represent the dynamic things that is called as the dynamic diagram or behavioral the behavior is not static the behavior of the system is also not static it always changing so that behavioral description can be represented with the help of the behavioral diagram behavioral diagrams or dynamic diagrams both are same now we are going to discuss about the use case diagram what is the meaning of the use case whenever we are having the requirements see here one important thing you have to remember for this use case diagram okay in the use case diagram actually it is nothing but collection of use cases and actors and their relationships use cases can be represented like this this is the use case and actor will be represented like this this is actors so collection of these use cases and collection of these actors this use case diagram can contain okay so what is the important thing why it coming under the dynamic thing collection of use cases collection of uh, um, actors listen see in the use case diagram we are having it is also called as one type of the requirements diagram so the requirements are not static throughout the designing of the system requirements may change until uh, end of the system in the middle itself the client will come and give some more requirements so that we have to change the entire use case diagram so that's why it always not be static it comes under the dynamic or it changes the behavior of the system so that's why we can change we can say it is the use case diagram is one kind of the behavioral diagram or the dynamic diagram the next one is sequence diagram what is the meaning of the sequence diagram let's see each and every use case the diagram what i have drawn for the use case is the collection of some set of the steps this is use case it contains some set of the steps 
For example, I have taken login. Login contains what? Uh, some set of the steps. So, the person enter into the system, user welcomes him, he give authentication like username and password, system verifies and finally he got the confirmation. Like this, some set of the interchange of messages will be there from this end to that end. That means the user to the system. That is nothing but the login use case. So, how these uh, sequential of this exchange of information in the order can be represented with the help of the sequence diagram. Okay. So, the dynamically exchanging of the information among the objects can be represented with the sequence diagram. So, in the time manner, synchronization manner, synchronization means what? Not dumping the messages from one place to the another place. We are sending the messages in the sequence order from source to the destination. Okay. So, next one is the collaboration diagram. Collaboration diagram is also same, how the objects are connected, but not time ordering of the messages. The object A sends the messages, all are listed. Object B sends the messages, all are listed like this. For example, I will show these are the objects that are connected. This one is one object, this is another object. Object 1 sends messages 1, 2, 3. Object 2, this is object 1 sorry object A, this is object B, it sends messages 4, 5, 6. Like this, the messages to that particular object which belongs to them is listed like this 1, 2, 3 and 4, 5, 6 like that. That is the collaboration diagram. Okay. So, collaboration diagram is also called as communication diagram in star ML. It is also called as communication diagram. The next one is nothing but the activity. What is the meaning of the activity? How the ongoing process is going on from top to bottom? What are the collection of activities? Okay, the long oval activity. How these activities are going on? How this process is going on? How the events are going can be represented with the activity. It's a dynamic process. So, that's why it comes under the dynamic diagram. In the previous case, sequence diagram is also one kind of dynamic diagram. The dynamically uh, objects are exchanging the messages from one place to another place. Now, the last one is state chart diagram. State chart diagram, this is nothing but this shape state, the rounded rectangle, okay, state 1, state 2, and finally this one like this. What is the state actually? State chart or state machine it is called as. What is the state? Object is static. For example, person A is the object. His physical details, his results, uh, sorry, his remaining details won't change like his name, his date of birth, the class where he is studying, the height, the weight. These are the five properties of the object. These five properties won't change. But what will change? The person state is not static. That means he cannot, he can be here sometimes in this room, sometimes he may be there in another room, sometimes he may be there in the college, like that the state will be changes from time to time. So, which diagram can, can support these states of the objects from the starting of the lifetime of the object to the end of the lifetime of the object, that is nothing but the state chart diagram. A state machine is nothing but a collection of state charts. Whenever you want to represent multiple number of the states of the objects, definitely you go for state machines. So, what is a state machine? A state machine is nothing but collection of uh, state chart diagrams. So, like that these are the various kinds of the diagrams that we are going to represent in the UML. So, these represents the dynamic behavior and these represent the static behavior. Static means once created never be changes whereas dynamic they through, throughout the lifetime they will changes. Like that the UML supports 9 number of the diagrams based on the views. In the coming video, we talk about some more things relevant to the UML. So, uh, the thing what I request you to you is, if at all anybody didn't subscribe my channel, please subscribe my channel and as well as please uh, allow the, uh, please sorry, please uh, comment also what you want exactly, is there any modifications are required or is there any relevant subject you require. So, please tell me in the comment section, okay. So, uh, please subscribe my channel and watch all. Thank you. Thank you one and all.